Hi, my name is Lauritz Thompson, and I will now give you a short presentation on me, uh, my research, and the environment here in Glasgow. Um, so let me share my screen with you. I recently joined the School of Computing Science at the University of Glasgow as a lecturer in computer systems to work on resource efficient distributed computing for data intensive applications. The motivation for my work is that there are increasingly many applications that make use of large amounts of data. This includes scientific data processing in research organizations, such as crunching genome or earth observation data, as well as big data applications in industry, such as ranking websites, recommending content, or looking for anomalies and business transaction logs. On the other side, there are also data intensive applications in context of the distributed sensors and devices of the Internet of Things. Here, applications towards smarter cities, factories, and people's homes come to mind. I do believe that there's immense potential in using data driven methods and machine learning across domains and disciplines. Though, if we're not careful, this development will further increase computing's already significant environmental footprint. Computing is currently estimated to contribute 2 to 3% of the global carbon emissions, very much rivaling aviation. And computing's share is projected to rise further over the next years and decades, faster actually than aviation, not least because of the trend towards more data intensive applications. Many data intensive applications run on top of scalable and fault tolerant distributed processing systems. Here are a few examples of important system classes, along with popular open source systems for each class, such as Apache Spark, NextFlow, and TensorFlow. These systems make it a lot easier to program scalable and reliable distributed applications that can process large amounts of data in parallel on various compute nodes and clusters. Still, it is largely up to users where, when, and on what resources their jobs run, where it can make a huge difference for the performance, but also for the energy consumed and finally carbon emissions, how resources are configured for a job. A major challenge is that computing infrastructures are becoming increasingly diverse, really distributed, heterogeneous, and dynamic. Beyond the data center, there will be more edge and fog resources and IoT devices. Generally, this will enable to run applications closer to data sources and users, allowing for lower latencies, but also might just be necessary for security and privacy reasons or to decrease the amount of energy consumed for wide area networking. In any case, this creates distinctively heterogeneous new distributed computing environments. Meanwhile, also data centers are becoming more diverse. Take for example, AWS, where you now have hundreds of different virtual machines you can choose for your application, various general purpose ones, but then also memory optimized or compute optimized instances, or machines with access to accelerators. And the same is true for dedicated cluster infrastructures in research organizations. It is absolutely not uncommon that scientists have access to several cluster infrastructures, some of them again consisting of different types of machines. Given such diverse infrastructures and a particular data intensive job, plus often also some important objectives and constraints, such as the goal of the lowest runtime, or lowest carbon emissions, or constraints such as a fixed deadline or a limited budget. The research questions become the following. First, which resources do you choose for your applications? And how many of those? 10 medium sized virtual machines, or better make that 20 to make sure you meet a certain runtime target? So questions of resource allocation. Second, when and where should applications be executed? The second job in the queue of submitted applications onto the node with the most memory available still, or particular tasks of a larger job graph onto specific resources. So questions of scheduling and placement. Third, how do you configure system specific resource options? For example, how much memory should be allocated to 
network buffers, how much to task state, and how often should in-memory processing snapshot its current state to disks for fault tolerance every 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute. So questions of system parameter tuning. These are all questions that popped up in my research before and I've worked towards different objectives and constraints. Lately, however, the goal that appears to be most important is resource efficiency and sustainability. Given the climate crisis and computing's quickly increasing environmental footprint, I believe we need to work towards a more resource efficient and sustainable use of distributed computing infrastructures for our data intensive applications. And I've started to focus on this in my research. Let me give you a couple of examples. First, a lot of my recent work attempts to allocate the right resources for large and distributed data processing jobs. Right here in the sense that performance expectations of users are met without resource bottlenecks, but also without significant over-provisioning and with the least overhead for using many, many nodes simultaneously. This is something we achieve with performance models trained on monitoring data from previous executions or dedicated profiling runs of jobs. And the specific focus of this work is on collaborative approaches where groups of users share performance data for an effective configuration also of jobs that any individual user has not yet run repeatedly. The second example I want to highlight is a study of the potential to reduce the carbon emissions of cloud computing by delaying batch workloads to times with greener energy available. This study received considerable attention last year as it indicates that by taking the changing energy mix and therefore carbon intensities of public grids into account, we can shift batch processing workloads in time to save close to 20% of emissions in many regions of the world while still doing the same computations. This is a general potential that we estimated last year using simulations and that I now want to realize practically for large scale data parallel processing and cloud infrastructures. Together with researchers at TU Berlin in Germany, I'm currently also looking at distributed computing alongside distributed energy production, especially at edge computing that happens close to renewable energy sources such as solar and wind, where there might be stranded energy, or in other words, renewable excess power. So power that is produced, but not used. Here, we work to integrate renewable energy forecasts into the scheduling of flexible edge computing workloads, such as machine learning jobs. Lastly, I've also worked on an improved resource management for data intensive systems deployed at the edge of networks where keeping both data and resource management decisions local, local to the edge can be most efficient. But then we need to make calls without perfect and up-to-date global knowledge and instead from a limited local view. That is often not easy, but very interesting and also just necessary. Think about it. If the goal is to react to changes at the edge quickly and efficiently, then the monitoring and resource management cannot be done by a central all-knowing scheduler far away up in the cloud. Edge nodes will need to make decisions based on their own models of performance and availability. Investigating such questions around the emerging infrastructures of the Internet of Things still lacks good simulation and testing tools though. So I'm also interested in developing um, better tooling to, to support this research in the first place. These examples capture not only research that led to publications in the proceedings of highly ranked international conferences and journals, but also was all done together with PhD students. So please do understand these examples as very well in scope, not only of my area of research, but also for potential future PhD thesis. I'm very excited about the opportunity to set up a new lab around my research at the University of Glasgow as a new and early career member of staff. So if you join me, 
you will work with a motivated supervisor who up until a few years ago was a PhD student himself. And you will also get the chance to shape much of the lab agenda and culture with me. At the same time, the system section and the School of Computing Science at the University of Glasgow provide a well-established and renowned environment to do a PhD or postdoc in. You will be able to get feedback from many world-leading academics. You will get to interact with plenty of motivated and bright PhD students and postdocs that are at different stages in their academic journeys right from your very first day here. And there's a variety of infrastructure and equipment available across the school. Finally, my research also falls within the newest research theme of the school, where there is a strong momentum towards low carbon and sustainable computing currently here in Glasgow, with more and more researchers taking an interest in this very important topic. Beyond the immediate environment at the University of Glasgow, there will also be good possibilities to interact and collaborate with strong computer systems groups in and around Berlin, as I previously was at. Humboldt University and the Technical University of Berlin. There, I already organized two research teams before coming to Glasgow. And I'm also part of the PhD thesis advisory committee of several students in Berlin. So even though I'm a new lecturer in Glasgow, I can assure you that I have a good amount of experience in, in guiding research and that I very much enjoy working closely with research assistants and associates. You can find out more about me and my research on my website, lauerstamsen.org, and I also tweet about my research. If you are interested in working with me on resource efficient distributed computing here in the School of Computing Science in Glasgow, please get in touch with me. Thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward to hear from you. Bye.